Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless the evil we are seeing today isn't republican versus democrat right versus left it's good versus evil there are only two groups of people in this world the saved and the unsaved here's a question everyone needs to answer whether you are a democrat republican or not affiliated with either party do you love Jesus? Many professing Christians say they love Jesus, but in all actuality, they hate him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Many who profess to be Christ followers are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, and pro-transgender. They are defiant to the laws of God, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. How then can these people claim they love Jesus when he said, if you love me, keep my commandments? Jesus declares, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, as we read in Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For those who say Jesus never said anything about abortion, homosexuality, and transgenderism being a sin, the Bible tells us all scripture is inspired by God as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Scripture has plenty of negative things to say about killing the innocent and homosexuality. It's called lawlessness. Many professing Christians justify sin by using Christ's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself means telling them the truth in love, not by condoning their sin. The good news is, God will forgive all sin, as we read in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Spiritual warfare is off the charts. Battle lines are being drawn and people are choosing sides. The United States is divided on just about every issue. Race, homosexuality, transgenderism, abortion, climate change, gun rights, and the list goes on. Jesus said that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, as we read in Matthew 12, 25. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Jesus tells us he is the reason behind the division we are seeing today, as we read in Luke 12, 51 through 53. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Father will be divided against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Matthew 10, 34 through 39. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Proverbs 29.2 
When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. First, the good news, the conventional view among people who follow politics is that the Democratic Party is about to suffer a humiliating repudiation in next week's midterm elections. It seems very likely as of now that Democrats will lose both houses of Congress. And that's just the beginning of their pain. Polls suggest that even places that supported Joe Biden by a wide margin in 2020 are about to swing dramatically against him and his party. A week from today, New York, of all places, could have a Republican governor. The last time there was an election in New York, Biden won the state by 23 points. What we're seeing is what political scientists refer to as a realignment. And there's no mystery as to why it's happening. Democrats failed, conclusively. No group in American history has done a worse job running this country than the neoliberals currently in charge. They're vicious, they're intolerant, and they are utterly corrupt. They're vicious, they're intolerant, and they are utterly corrupt. And they are utterly corrupt. Corrupt. Senator Biden, it's nice to have you here as the youngest member of the Senate, the one, therefore, who may expect the longest career there. I wonder if you'd say <laughs> to us, since it's clear that you're not corrupt and you got elected, why should people think that the system produces corrupt results when there you are? Well, I'm not sure you should assume I'm not corrupt, but I thank you for that, though. The system does produce corruption, and in, in, I think implicit in the system is corruption, when in fact, whether or not you can run for public office, and it costs a great deal of money to run for the United States Senate, even for a small state like Delaware, uh, you have to go to those people who have money, and they always want something. Well, I'm not sure you should assume I'm not corrupt. Well, I'm not sure you should assume I'm not corrupt. Well, I'm not sure you should assume I'm not corrupt. But above all, they are incompetent. In less than two years, it is not an overstatement to say they have run this country into the ground, wrecking our economy, desecrating our military, and opening the borders of the United States to more than five million lawbreakers. The destruction they have wrought is so profound, it's hard to describe. So of course there will be consequences for that. In a country with democratic elections, how could this party stay in power? Honestly, we don't know. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Tonight, Biden traveled across the city of Washington to Union Station. Built by Teddy Roosevelt more than 100 years ago, Union Station was for generations one of the most beautiful public buildings in this country. Under Joe Biden, it has become a homeless encampment, a place that is too filthy and too dangerous for Starbucks. Standing at this monument to his own failures, Biden proceeded to do what he now so commonly does, bark at the rest of us for our moral failures. The guy who showered with his daughter is telling you you're a bad person. Tonight's topic, democracy. Here's a taste of it. Yet now, extreme MAGA Republicans aim to question not only the legitimacy of past elections, but elections being held now and into the future. The extreme MAGA element of the Republican Party, which is a minority of that party, as I said earlier, but is this driving force, is trying to succeed where they failed in 2020 to suppress the right of voters and subvert the electoral system itself. Well, that's very weird if you think about it. So here we are less than a week before the Democratic Party is expected to suffer overwhelming losses in the midterm elections. And here you have the leader of that party, Joe Biden, commanding you not to complain about the election results. Why is that? Well, let's see. Here's Joe Biden telling you that, thanks to the changes, the many changes Democrats have made to our system of voting, all of which make voter fraud easier to commit, we may not know the results of the elections for a few days. But don't be alarmed. Everything is completely on the level. And whatever you do, do not ask questions, or else you're a criminal. Watch. We want Americans to vote. We want every American's voice to be heard. Now we have to move the process forward. We know that more and more ballots are cast in early voting or by mail in America. And we know that many states don't start counting those ballots until after the polls close on November 8th. That means in some cases we won't know the winner of the election for a few days until a few days after the election. It takes time to count all legitimate ballots in a legal and orderly manner. 
It's always been important for citizens in a democracy to be informed and engaged. Now it's important for citizens to be patient as well. That's how it's supposed to work. What is this? What is going on here? Biden could have given, would under normal circumstances have given, a speech about his policies and how they've made your life better. He tried to convince you this country is actually in better shape than it looks, and he did that. He could, in other words, have made a pitch for your vote based on what he has done. That's what politicians do in functioning democracies. They try to convince you to support them on the basis of what they have done for you. That is democracy. That's not at all what Joe Biden just did. Instead, Biden commanded you to accept the election results whenever they arrive, no matter what they may be. It was bizarre. I believe God has raised up Joe Biden for such a time as this. I believe God is using Joe Biden as judgment on the United States of America. Since Biden took office, every kind of evil has run amok. God will use anyone he chooses to fulfill his purpose. And I believe that purpose for Joe Biden is the destruction of America. Since America will not recognize God as the creator of all things, follow his commandments and give him the glory that only he deserves, he has left this nation to its own destruction. Proverbs 16.6 says, in mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. There is no fear of God in America, and the result is a society full of evildoers. When we are choosing to hold on to sin, rather than repent and change, God will not hear our prayers, as we read in Isaiah 1.15. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Proverbs 28.9 says, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. America continues to do evil and disregard God's moral law, make up a God of our own liking, and continue to do what is right in our own eyes. America continues to lie, steal, blaspheme God's name, fornicate, commit adultery, look at pornography, covet what is not ours, and take human life. Jeremiah 30.12 says, For thus says the Lord, Your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. As a nation, I think America may have reached the point in time where God will no longer hear our prayers because our sin is incurable. A rejection of Joe Biden's party from their perspective is the end of the system itself, and they clearly believe that. They mean it. That's why the Biden administration has spent the last two years destroying the two prerequisites for American democracy. Those would be free speech and the rule of law. It's why they've silenced disobedient reporters. It's why they put their political opponents in jail. It's why FBI agents with automatic rifles dragged Christians from their homes for the crime of praying in abortion clinics. It's why nonviolent protesters remain in jail tonight for daring to walk into what used to be called the People's House. Because as far as the Democratic Party is concerned, that house no longer belongs to the people. It belongs to the party, along with the entire U.S. government and the nation itself. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted in the United States like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. 
Matthew 24, 9 and 10, lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit as we read in John 3.3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself as we read in John 6:44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3:9 and Romans 2:4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Ephesians 2, 8, 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. 
The person who claims to be a Christian but lives in willful disobedience to Christ has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh, as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians, 5:22 through 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves are free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God. Our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. God, what if his appearance